Salam from the NewsClick studios in New Delhi. I'm Siddhant Ani and you're watching Playthings of Alien Forces. Unfortunately, uh, times are such that we've been hit again by another wave of or another variant of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, because of which me and my man Leslie are separated again by this uh, virtual barrier. Uh, yeah. And, and that in many ways is the theme of this first show of uh, 2022. Uh, unfortunately, not too many things have changed on that front. We're still talking about uh, COVID-19 and its impact on sport. Uh, today, of course, the big story is that Novak Djokovic, I think, who is the world's number one tennis player uh, and one of the most successful tennis players, male tennis players of all time, uh, has won a case against the Australian government for cancelling a visa that they had issued him uh, once he arrived in country. Uh, this has to do with his undeclared vaccination status. Now, Djokovic uh, secured this visa. He's in Australia to play or potentially to play in the upcoming Australian Open Tennis Grand Slam. Uh, he secured this visa after a Victoria government independent medical uh, committee cleared him uh, or said that basically he fulfilled whatever criteria the Australian government had set uh, for entry to be allowed into the, uh, into the country, into Australia. Uh, now, while he has not declared his vaccination status and, and the assumption, I think, for most of us, uh, based on what he's been saying and what's been coming out of his camp, is that he is against uh, the vaccination or against any sort of vaccination uh, against coronavirus. But because he had COVID-19 and has presented evidence of enough antibodies, the government has said that he is exempt from vaccination requirements. Uh, otherwise, Australia has mandated that anyone entering the country must be doubly vaxxed and then has to go through a quarantine, etc., etc. Uh, Leslie, sorry for that monologue. Uh, just setting it up a little bit. Uh, you've been following this story, Les, uh, from for for uh, from for a few weeks now, actually, before this Australian Open situation uh, developed. Uh, what's happening, man? Uh, we saw scenes uh, outside the courtroom uh, where where Novak uh, just made an appearance. Hundreds of Serbians on the streets, of course, none of them wearing any sort of masks or other protective equipment. Uh, no, I'm not sure what their vaccination status is. Uh, but behaving as though Djokovic is some kind of hero, uh, what do you make of it? Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, yeah, so it's been, uh, the two and fro has been happening for the last three months or so, because that's when the first discussions came up whether unvaccinated players would be allowed to play in Australia in the first Grand Slam of the year. And uh, there was U-turns made by the Australian government who initially had said that no uh, player would be allowed inside who are not vaccinated. And then they made a dilly-dally of it, saying that they may be allowed, they might be allowed, there would be exemptions. And look at what is, it has led to. It has brought it to this, which is actually a circus, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. where uh, an unnecessary circle where a player has been, I mean, a player of Djokovic's stature, a player of, uh, I mean, for that matter, any stature shouldn't go through that. And uh, at the same time, uh, if the if there was clarity, I'm sure Djokovic wouldn't have bothered to travel to Australia if they had clearly said that no, it's not allowed. So mm. the fault lies, I mean, not in people making him a hero or not Djokovic's stance as such, because as far as I look at it, it's a personal choice, it's a personal right that he's exercising, whether he wants to vaccinate or not. Mm. Whether that would lead to influencing people to go anti-vax is something, uh, is something that we need to, uh, I mean, is something that we shouldn't be getting into in the first place as, as such. Yeah, the pl player's stature, the reach of the player is very evident from the overwhelming support that he has got bought in Australia or from his country or from across the world. There are many people who are supporting Djokovic online, offline. So, uh, of course, he has his way in things. He has the uh, power to convey ideas and all that stuff. But ultimately, if you look at, if you take my example, for instance, I, I, I was always skeptical about vaccination. I uh, initially delayed the vaccination, but I took it uh, looking at a larger picture as such. So I don't think a superstar tennis player saying things like, 
is against vaccination and he doubts the chemical that is being pumped in and all that. In a larger sense, with the kind of scientific understanding that the world has now and the and the way science and its latest findings reach us via media or via anything else, I don't think uh, it's a question of whether one voice versus the entire scientific community. So I don't think that's even a factor here. Mm. So then uh, what you asked about why is he become a hero as such? Because obviously he's an anti-establishment and right? the world has always celebrated anti-establishment people who go against the time. So, mm. and he has, he, I mean, he has stood his ground when the entire tennis fraternity, including the likes of uh, Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal, they are all neutral about it. So, he is one player who was, who, was, who was not afraid to speak his mind. So, let him be, I mean, in that sense. Mm. And uh, as far as what he is going through in Australia, it's thoroughly unfair on the player. Which is because it has been the fault of the Australian government here. Government. And, they are, and, and at the same time, what they did was that they used this as an election prop as well. Because elections mm-hmm. are coming up and the federal <laughs> government is under a lot of scrutiny on how they have handled this COVID, COVID-19 situation and the latest surge that is happening. Mm-hmm. And uh, they got a good global superstar to make a scapegoat, make a, make a point even that we are very stern, we are very firm in our actions and all that. Yeah. But, then, but then the courts quashed it. So, because it was, it was a futile and baseless attempt. It was, it was poor PR. Hmm. And uh, so that has brought this out. And uh, it's, it's not resolved that I would say, because there are rumors again doing the rounds on social media that uh, you, the Australian government is again mulling because apparently the health minister has the veto power yeah. to decide, yeah. decide on this this again. Mm-hmm. They can mm-hmm. revoke his visa again. again. And, yeah. uh, and, that, and at the same time, also, if it's not revoked, whether Victoria government and the tennis Australia would allow his participation now that now that it has escalated into a into a crisis like this, will that happen again? That's also that's also a question to ponder. Having mm-hmm. said that. Uh, reports indicate that Tennis Australia has been in touch with uh, Novak Djokovic through the ordeal, and they are, I mean, a defending champion, nine-time champion of Australian Open. They, uh, the indications are that they want him to play. So, yeah. No, I, I'm sure. I mean, having gone through this entire process of even applying for this exemption and all of that, no doubt Tennis Australia would have been involved in that process uh, somehow. Uh, you know, because it's one thing to get a visa and enter the country, but I don't think uh, Djokovic and his team would have sort of gone ahead with this process if they had a thought that Tennis Australia would then, e- even if he had a visa, uh, would not allow him to play. Uh, so I'm sure they were involved in the process. Uh, I, it's interesting that you bring up uh, also the Australian government and, and what's happening there with Scott Morrison's government's uh, handling of, of this crisis. Australia is now at a stage where they have more cases probably in one day than they've had in the entire course of the pandemic. So at this yeah. time, when, when so much of the focus is on what's happening to this tennis superstar, uh, the country is also going through a very tough time, particularly, you know, uh, working people. Uh, because like, like I was uh, talking to someone who is in Sydney at the moment and they were saying that these, because of these number of cases, they just don't have the kind of uh, preparedness. Rapid antigen tests, for example, are going for around 20 Australian dollars per test. Uh, So the kind of support that, let's say, a working class person is receiving from the government is around 40 or 50 dollars per day in which they have to survive, right? To eat, to pay rent, to do whatever else they have to. If you have to spend 20 out of those 40 just on getting one... uh, a rapid antigen test, which allows you, and you have to keep testing, right? Because otherwise you can't enter any establishment, whether it's a restaurant or or whatever it is that you have to do, public transport to get to your place of work. So so all of those challenges are happening. And and, uh, of course, Australian politicians have not uh, wasted any opportunity to jump on Scott Morrison and his and his government uh, in their handling of of the, the Djokovic story saying that, uh, you know, he's done a poor job with rolling out the booster doses for the vaccine, uh, rapid antigen tests are not available, and now they can't even sort of keep control on 
uh, the borders, uh, as it were. It's not an argument that, I, that 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 we or anyone endorses. We're just saying the or telling you the conversations that are happening. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I'm a little glad in that sense that, uh, I mean, no, though globally, Scott Morrison and Djokovic are the superstars of the narrative in Australia, but at least within the country, they understand what the priorities are, which which mm. rarely happens in our country that way, right? Because mm. we believe in pyrotech, we get distracted by pyrotech. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so, Leslie, what's likely to happen and when will we have final clarity on, on, on this situation? Uh, let's wait. I mean, now it's, I guess, late for today to have any, any of such updates as such. But I think within a day or two, because the tournament has, because the tournament starts next week, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, within a day or two, they need to ensure, I mean, give clarity to Djokovic that he can, he can get into the secure bubble which, which, is being for, which is formed for, for the Australian Open and get himself uh, tested again and uh, ensure that he is clean and then get into the uh, preparation and playing part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I already, it feels that, I mean, and it would be a record-breaking victory if he can manage to reach the final and lift that title again. 10th title mm -hmm. and also 21st Grand Slam. So, mm -hmm. overtaking Federer and Nadal. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but he already has an handicap because apparently in detention he has had I mean that's that's what the reports come out have come out. His mother and his, his parents have been very vocal about it. His father called mm. him Jesus. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, his mother has said that his son was in a windowless room. I don't know how true that is, but uh, of course training would have suffered and preparation would have suffered. He would have. And he he is a person who has very strict dietary requirements. Uh, you can say hyper organic. So yeah. uh, <clears throat> that has suffered to to an extent. So uh, so you will have, as a, on an individual in an individual capacity he has to refocus and make the best out of it. At the same time, Australia and its Australia also have to ensure that uh, he is assimilated into the bubble in the right way. And bubbles are tricky with the Omicron variant we have seen. And, and, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Which which. Perfectly leads us to <laughs> the, the next part of, of the show where we're, we're talking about India now and uh, I think two of the most high profile ongoing national level sports events or they at least they were ongoing, I, I'm not sure, they are, they are still on, ongoing, at least the Indian Super League is. Uh, but the I-League, uh, which, is, which is now the second league of Indian football, uh, which was being held in a bio bubble in Kolkata has been called off. Uh, the initial reports say six weeks, but our sources and people we've spoken to uh, tell us that it is unlikely that that competition will resume before March of this year, once this wave is over and things like that, because the 13 teams that were participating in that tournament have now dispersed from Kolkata. Most players have gone home, etc., etc. So, uh, the time frame of six weeks, I don't think is enough for them to go home and then come back and reform a bubble and have all of that quarantine process uh, done again. So, most likely that tournament will not resume uh, before March of this year. And the Indian Super League, which was until now uh, continuing to function in its bio bubble, uh, secure and protected from what's happening in the world outside, uh, that bubble has also been breached. Uh, several high profile players, including uh, one current or former India captain uh, belonging to ATK Mohan Bagan, who also uh, has returned recently from Novak Djokovic's neighborhood, uh, not Serbia, but uh, Croatia in this case. Um, not sure how much that influenced his behavior in the lead up to contracting the virus. But several other players in the camp have, have also, it has come out since, have also tested positive. Some of their family members have also tested positive. So clearly, Leslie, these bio bubbles not working as well, uh, like you were mentioning. Uh, you know, this this escape, uh, whatever it is of of the virus escapability, whether it's the vaccine or or these bubbles. Uh, what do you make of it at this stage? We are probably heading into uh, in March, April, another season of the IPL and sport. <coughs> Sport is kind of pushing because sport is big business. Many billions of dollars uh, are transacted 
on or around sports fields. So there's a big push for sport to resume uh, as full on as possible. Uh, what do you make of these bubbles and how they are happening in India at the moment? It is an industry and which should be treated as an industry as far as uh, I mean, big sport is concerned. I mean, uh, the money that is involved, the revenue that it generates, the economic impact that is that it would have on a larger scale in the country's economy. So uh, we went via the bubble way, which is not how sport is run, league sport is run in, in uh, Europe, for instance. I mean, mm. we have discussed at this discussion before, uh, especially when we discussed African nation of a uh, couple of nations when we were just comparing how Europe it works and whatever the facilities that they have, which enable them to have normal competition without the crowd, but still club home and away club kind of competition and not exactly in a bubble where all the teams are within two, confined in two, three hotels. Mm. So we went via this and I believe that uh, it was successful Last year, we saw ISL and ILE complete without incident. In fact, you were there in that bubble, right? Maybe you mm. can give some insight as to what exactly the protocols were. Mm. And see, uh, when we discussed IPL and uh, subsequently World Cup and how Indian players underperformed, one of the factors that we spoke about was bubble fatigue. Mm. And bubble fatigue leads to underperformance, demotivation, and all these factors. Bubble fatigue also leads to uh, laxity in implementing things. So yeah, a friend of yeah, yeah a, a friend of mine was talking about how now uh, he's based uh, in Bangalore and he works for an university, mm. and the classes are online, but they are required to travel to the office for work. Mm. Uh, for what joy we don't get, but they are required to do that. They are required to log in and be there, and obviously some exposure happened and tested and again like you mentioned about Australia government and how they do it we testing again after two three days when another someone said that I got it so it, yeah. it's a it's a it's a tricky business so uh, uh, but what he was saying was that if she goes out somewhere else it would be always focused in keeping up herself safe mm. but when you are in a environment where you are very familiar and you are familiar. spending like yeah. eight hours, eight hours there, you tend yeah. to be a little lax about something. So someone came up and uh, you are uh, without a mask in your cabin and someone came up, he spoke to her, that person turned out to be COVID positive. So mm -hmm. that kind of a situation. The same thing applies at a larger scale in the bio bubble, plus the idea of this fatigue playing in because the players are completely confined. You experienced it yourself, so you will know what, what, what kind of a mental toll it takes. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that in the second season, third season, with the so hyper uh, spreading variant doing the rounds, and at the same time, the combination factor of fatigue and laxity in approach and all these things, all, all these are playing together. I still firmly believe that the protocol set for a bubble can be made foolproof, just that the human elements have to be in place intact, sharp, which, which I feel is the reason why these breaches have happened. You can probably elaborate on that because we have, you have experienced a bubble, so you may understand things differently. So I, I just like to know what you think about that. No, I, I, I mean, uh, not, not much uh, in terms of uh, difference in understanding from what you have mentioned. Uh, it, it is pretty much, I, I'm, I'm pretty much 100% in agreement with what you're saying. That it is possible, I, I mean, we have uh, constantly since 2019 debated uh, the the... You know, like especially a sport like football, which is a mass sport that 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 is uh, very much based on people's feelings and emotions, right? So without fans, football is nothing. Now the argument is that okay, there are as many fans who are, or perhaps more fans that are watching the sport or any sport today uh, via the internet, via television, and 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 other uh, otherwise. So so predominantly, sport is being played for television audiences and not for those who are coming to stadiums. Now, if that is the logic, then I, okay, I can understand uh, wanting to have it in uh, that kind of bubble environment. But it's far from an ideal way to have sport at all. Uh, and this is not even considering the fact that in holding these tournaments in bubbles, particularly in countries like India, it's something that we talked about last year when things were at 
their worst and people were dying by the hundreds and thousands and on the other hand right next to like you uh, very sort of uh, em emphatically wrote in one of your columns uh, that literally across the road from uh, the Firosha Kotla Stadium uh, where the IPL was happening uh, bodies were uh, burning of people who were, who were dying of yeah. COVID-19. So, so, so th that kind of callousness has kind of permeated sport in, in the times of, I think, uh, this pandemic and has shown that like we don't necessarily, when it comes to a question of big business and, and, and the kind of money that is uh, being, uh, you know, uh, traded around in these things, we, we tend to stop caring about the human impact it has not just on the fans and, and people around us, but also, like you were rightly mentioning, on the players, on whose uh, endeavour this entire structure is based. Uh, we, we even sort of forget about their reality. Now, of course, the fact is, like many people who are in management, uh, they keep telling us that, you know, look at them, they are so lucky, these players, that despite what's happening around the country, at least they are getting a chance to play and train and hotel mein reh rahe hain matlab kya problem hai hai na they should be they, they, they should they be happy they forget that ultimately it's a glorified bonded labor in a way na have you asked the player whether they want to be with their family when the pandemic is raging or yeah absolutely yeah. so so exactly exactly this so when this isa i league break was announced that the tournament is being postponed of course, clubs had the option because it, whenever it does resume, it will resume in the same bubble in Kolkata itself, yeah, yeah. most likely. So, so clubs had the option and players had the option of staying on Keeping in Kolkata. Yeah, yeah. yeah, somebody decide. Uh, I don't you know. think any. I don't think anyone. Uh, probably unanimously to the last man, everyone has gone back home to be with their families in this time, uh, whether or not they are. I mean, whatever the case, that is yeah. what hum, human uh, nature is. Uh, and the last part of it is how these breaches happen. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's familiarity. It's uh, seeing what's happening in, in, in a wider environment. Yeah. You can see from your hotel room window, right? Yeah. People walking on the streets without masks, without any kind of uh, even an attempt to maintain some kind of distance. Uh, and then you're, you're, you're inside this glass and steel uh, cage watching them, you're bound to get lax. And in this particular case, I think what has happened, in, at, at least at this one hotel where there was the most significant outbreak, I think 15, as many as 15 players from one team tested positive. Uh, it's because some of the hotel staff, which in the previous bubble, they were all given accommodation on site. So just like we were in the bubble and the players were in the bubble, so were the staff, uh, uh, yeah. This year, because of all of the factors that you very rightly mentioned, these staff members were going home. Now, their homes could be anywhere, uh, obviously, yeah. uh, which means taking public transport, being exposed, etc., etc., and then coming into the bubble and bringing all of that exposure with them. So, essentially, it was not a secure bubble at all, and, and, yeah. and therefore, the breaches happened. Uh, I think uh, probably when things resume, there will be once again the level of seriousness, hopefully. Because un unfortunately, some of this is also, the seriousness of it is also being reduced by this approach that this variant of the virus is somehow less serious than previous variants. Uh, because the impact is less mild, people are vaccinated, etc., etc. So, if it gaya, then there is no big deal. That kind of approach is also starting to creep in. That these these players are young, they are they are fit, they are athletes, yeah. so they'll get over it. So all of this has to change, I think. Uh, and and the approach to it has to go back to a more scientific approach, like you were rightly pointing out. And if we are doing it and calling it a bubble, then we have to maintain uh, uh, the kind of uh, and if we are doing it and calling it a bubble, then we have to maintain that as, as much as possible. Otherwise, matlab, might as well then uh, you know do away with even the farce of uh, of it. Completely. So that's uh, uh, and uh, you mentioned domestic, but we have a larger tournament uh, coming up, which is the Asia Cup and uh, uh, AFC Asia Cup Women's uh, Championship, which is happening in Bombay and Pune. And yeah. uh, they are setting up a bu bubble for that. And I just hope that they are more serious about uh, that bubble than what they have showed in ISL and ILE. Yeah, 
so because it's it's an international tournament and also a larger thing at stake because for indian women's football for instance and we have again spoken at large about it vibhav ragnandan keeps writing about it and there is a series coming up in the uh, news clip on the uh, on the news clip website where we'll be following stories on women's football and how it has mm. suffered over the years and now it's struggling to come up and it is still they are uh, I mean, when you on the on the outside when you look at it they have going to play the asian cup but how many t- matches have they played competitively or mm. la- since 2019 women's tournament has not been held and it's 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 a pity that it's not been held it's a smaller tournament than the men's tournament and don't yeah. tell me that the all india federation has not yeah we are not unable to set up a bubble but they can set up mm. a bubble for the asian cup so mm. so there we are not just dealing with the virus so we are also dealing with that virus larger virus that indian sport and indian football has suffered which is gender disparity so yeah uh, yeah. yeah and you again you were uh, we we were discussing this in fact 420 did a show on 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 this as well so anything uh, about the tournament why is there any apprehensions coming up from the organizers is whether they should postpone it because by the time the tournament hits it would be peak in india bombay yeah. especially so yeah so pune uh, mumbai and navi mumbai are the venues for this 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 tournament 12 teams are coming uh, from across the continent 12 teams of course including india uh, the teams will arrive one week before the tournament starts on jan 20th no apprehensions as such uh, because the like you mentioned it's an international tournament uh, japan china australia and several other countries are participating they are sending their teams uh, no no foreign nation so far as even voiced any uh, apprehensions about sending their teams so it seems like the tournament will go ahead and hopefully hopefully yeah i think uh, with aditya thakre being such an influential member of the maharashtra government and being personally involved in uh, sort of how football is happening uh, they have full support both from the center as well as the state government and because it's all happening in one state uh, yeah. relatively small number of teams and and a short duration tournament Uh, they will have to maintain a very very strict bubble because like we were talking about on our show yesterday and this is a bit of a plug you please, please uh, if if you are into sport and particularly football and indian football uh, please do check out our sister channel 420 grams on youtube and give that a subscribe and a follow if if that interests you uh, we did a long chat on this with senior journalist jaydeep basu and sharda ugra last night uh, and arjun pandit of course Uh, but essentially what we're saying is this it seems this will go ahead and it will have to be a very very strict bubble because there's no scope for postponing there's no it's a two week tournament 20th it begins 6th of feb is the final so there's really no scope for any uh, kind of uh, pauses or postponements there if any teams are hit i think uh, the the answer or the situation will be resolved by forfeits and walkovers which will be really really unfortunate Uh, because i know a lot of us who uh, have been following or who follow asian football are very keen to see this tournament it's happening in india so we're pretty excited about india participating after for the first time since 2003 india's national women's team will be playing uh, at the asian level so a lot to look forward to on that front hopefully it will not be hit by covid uh, but uh, lesly we are also i mean i would love to chat more about the asian cup but we are uh, very much out of time on today's show So since it's the first show of the new year and and it's the first time I'm I'm seeing you in uh, in 2022 in this new season uh I wanted to ask you for your two point wish list what do you want from Indian sport in 2022 very quickly if you can uh Indian sport yeah and maybe global sport as well so right from uh, for, for India I would wish uh, so I I was in Bangalore year end uh I was there pursuing a couple of stories just made it back before the uh, wave hit and i was at a local football venue uh, bangalore football stadium where the district league was happening the bangalore city league was happening and two clubs were playing uh, it was so beautiful to be there at the venue regardless of what the quality or the level of football was being played i was talking to some officials i met some players and i just uh, spent an entire day over there at the venue and it it just felt uh, like the year was made for me whatever the lockdown that happened and all those things was forgotten in that in that one single day mm. so for my wish list for indian sport would be that 
I just hope that the uh, authorities, the uh, governing bodies, they look beyond big sport, beyond, uh, and start organizing everything for the grassroots as well. And grassroots, yeah, I know setting up bubbles for the grassroots will not be the answer. So they should have a, I mean, a separate way of functioning for that. At least show the will to organize it when things are not escalated as far as COVID-19 is concerned. So Bangalore, when the action was happening, uh, I mean, it was pretty stable numbers-wise, COVID cases-wise, and they had their own set of protocols to follow for the players to come in and all that. And things yeah. were things were functioning. So it is workable, just that I, I don't see that kind of an intent happening. Uh, I'm not talking about Olympic disciplines as such, because uh, there are many disciplines like wrestling, for instance, all the age group nationals have happened. So, mm. but there are still many sport who haven't resumed as such too. So I would like to see that happening right from the sub-district level to the national level where everybody gets the chance to play because ultimately yeah. when we talk about COVID-19 and, uh, and its impact, it's not just the current lot of players who, who would suffer probably the sport in itself would be taken back years because the next next in line next two generation might might be lost to the pandemic because they didn't yeah. get the chance to play when they had to play so yeah. so that i would like to change that and secondly a, a very selfish wish that i would uh, love to see the fifa world cup happening in full full uh, full uh, whatever the, the it's a festival you have been there last time you have been there a couple of times in fact so i would like to see that happening in in qatar in a grand way and also, I would like to believe that instances like Novak Djokovic and all won't happen there. We don't want <laughs> Lionel Messi. I mean, he's not vac he is vaccinated. I'm just saying he's someone like a Djokovic version of a footballer uh, having some issues. Apparently, uh, reports say that Qatar, the organizers have been clear that they would allow unvaccinated players in, in if they follow their guidelines of uh, yeah. quarantine and all that stuff. Other, 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 hmm. And, and uh, at the same time, it's a country which doesn't allow any anyone entry without vaccination status being declared. So so that's a hmm. that's a big 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 stance for them, which is something that other other countries are also taking. For instance, French Open uh, authorities already announced that they would allow Djokovic to play in the tournament. So hmm. uh, it's it's. Again, it's a tricky call, but it's also it also shows that sports should try to break uh, because we are dealing with different individuals, different mindsets, different ideas. But ultimately, we want sport to happen. We also want the world to overcome the pandemic. So where will we draw that balance? So I would that uh, FIFA World Cup can be a symbol to show that this is how it is, and Tokyo Olympics. Uh, showed it to a large extent last year. Winter Olympics is going to happen in Beijing in next it, month. Next yeah. month, so so that is also a, a, a big festival of sports. So that all these festivals happen at the same time. Keep keep. Let us also ensure that we are overcoming this by ensuring vaccines reach countries where it has not reached yeah. reach the, uh, uh, less privileged people as well. Uh, because we we ultimately we look at talk about Djokovic, but we don't talk. He is a man of privilege, but we don't we don't look at necessarily at people who genuinely need that vaccine and they are not getting it. So these yeah. are the discussions that should probably overwhelm the social media than a tennis player being detained. Though that's also a, a big topic as such because it it sustains our job. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes. So, and the one thing that you didn't mention on your wish list is that through 2022, may you continue to have that job. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, maybe sit in studio and chat because I miss yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon. All right, let's see. On that note, let's call it quits for this show. Uh, we will be back next week, hopefully, uh, depending on the scenario and depending on what happens in Leslie's own bio bubble. Uh, perhaps we will both be in studio uh, chatting to you from here. But irrespective of how that goes uh, for the next week, please stay safe, stay indoors as much as you can. If you do have to go out, please wear your masks, do your, uh, have, wash your hands, try to maintain as much physical distance from people as you can. Uh, look after yourselves and those around you. Uh, we'll be back next week. See you then. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.